We have done it. We have finally reached the milestone for our next world tour. The last one was 11,000 days. The last in-depth one was 10,000 days. You can check out a playlist in the description if you want to see all the previous ones. But we're on day 14,999. Let's go sleep. Right here. Boom, in the bed. Get your pogs loaded. 15,000 days, we did it. Ch Twitch chat here celebrating with me. Um, now let's get on with the video. All right, the main room that we're in right here is my storage room. This is the largest storage room in Hardcore Minecraft that I know of. Uh, it holds over 80 million something items in here and we have an item for every and we have a filter for every item in here, along with plenty of overflow storage. Um, there is a lot to this room, but now a huge change when we leave this room. There's something new up top. Outside of the storage room, we have completed all of our custom biomes. I believe in the last world tour, we were in progress with these. Uh, we had a lot of ways to go, but in the last 5,000 days, we have made an amazing amount of progress. Uh, all the biomes are completely decorated uh, and finished. Let's get down and take a look at some of them. The first biome that we have here in our main island is our pink biome. I am a pink slime. Subscribe if you're new and you didn't know that. Uh, and we live in a pink slime biome. All my slime items have been retextured to pink. We got the barrel down there where the storage room is. Um, we've got an amethyst farm and our main nether portal over here. This biome is decorated with some amazing custom cherry trees, and we have all these amazing paths that fit the vibe. Uh, leading us to the first farm here is our amethyst geode farm. Uh, I actually have a video on this that came out recently. Uh, that video will be linked in the description. Uh, I recommend checking it out. But for those that haven't seen it, we'll uh, just take a quick gander downstairs where we have our storage room where it collects all the items automatically. And here is one of the geodes and how we have it decorated uh, with our clean minecart escape. I don't have a minecart. Next in the pink biome is our nether portal. Uh, this is a huge nether portal that uses vanilla tweaks to allow us to have a custom shape. We've got some really cool statues here guarding it um, and about the largest path in any of the biomes. And lastly in the pink biome is the storage room uh, that's got this amazing pixel art barrel that we came out of. And on top of that is a tower of TNT that Twitch chat insists I keep making larger. Uh, one day I'm gonna have to blow this up. I'm sure you'll see the YouTube short of that. Next on our journey is the blue biome. This biome has an aquatic theme. It's got some sea pickles, some sea coral. There's whirlpool fog effects in there. And the main building has been one of the oldest structures in my hardcore world, the Empire Village building, holding our 300 plus villager trading hall is now being attacked by Squilliam. We've got these massive tentacles climbing up, engulfing the entire building, but let's head inside. Inside, we've got Zopa. He is taking care of the lobby, fending off any intruders. But up the elevator to each floor, we have 24 villagers of various professions where we have all of our books and we have every type all the way up. On the top floor of villagers, we have one very special guy over here. He is a custom player heads data pack villager that lets you get your player head in my hardcore Minecraft world uh, through a channel point redemption on Twitch. Make sure you drop a follow and start earning channel points over there if you want to also be included. But here at the very top is our trophy room. Uh, up here is our dragon egg. Uh, here is a monument to our my first one year affiliate subversary. 
Uh, we are currently, at the time of recording, I am live on my one year partner anniversary stream. Um, and whoever gives the most bits for this stream will end up claiming this block on the podium, uh, on the podium uh, for themselves. And uh, alongside some of these jack-o'-lanterns that you can't put on armor stands anymore. Then over here is the trophy room wall. This is how this whole room started. Everybody has who has been able to redeem this ha is up on the wall in some way, shape, or form. Uh, the trick with this is everybody who's on the wall paid a thousand more channel points than the previous person. Uh, and I believe the cost now is well over a hundred thousand channel points to get that next slot. Then we have two monthly walls over here. Leaderboards for the top cheerers and the top sub gifters on Twitch every month go up there. And knew that since um, the last world tour, the our first and our first three map art redemptions have been redeemed. So there is a map art ocean that we have built these three pixel art images in. And uh, we now have those to display in the world here too. Next on our list of view is the custom black biome that we have. Uh, this biome is inspired generally by evil. It is um, black and spotted with uh, fire and smoke uh, from these lava cracks, lava pits that are in here. Uh, there are two nuclear reactor cooling towers uh, with various farms inside. Um, let's go check out what we have. So the black biome has all of these um, really cool uh, burnt charred skeleton kind of rib cages. They're just like the vanilla ones that you find like in the nether or underground, but they are uh, scattered here and made of basalt. And the first thing we're gonna check out is one of the cooling towers where inside I have my custom basalt generator. So up here we have four basalt generators and a TNT duper that drops down into the middle and blows them up as they go. Then all of our items come down into here fully shulker loaded for our basalt farm. Next on our list is the other cooling tower. And when we enter in here, this is our concrete converter. This is designed by Ray's Works that we've been using for quite a few years now. Just used it earlier today to make some light gray concrete. So you put in the powder uh, right into this slot and, and then it gets shoved over, converted and blown up. The drops will fall into that water and then be put down into these chests uh, where you can grab it out and take it back home. Then just next door, we have our snowman. Um, this is generally an evil biome and you wouldn't think of a place that you would have a snow globe But don't worry this snow globe fits right in it's cracked and broke open see and he's frowning So when you go into here, uh, this is where you would uh, get snow layers from at the bottom But up top inside the snow globe is where we actually have a snowman trapped with a bunch of minecarts underneath to pick up the items uh, as quickly as you can mine them with some of these insanely fast shovels. Truth be told, the reason this is here is because all the other biomes were previously a desert biome and this one was previously a forest, so the snowman doesn't die. Next up on our list is this menacingly evil factory that can often be heard having TNT going off inside uh, where we have a dual nether tree farm designed by Ray's works. Uh, doing the warped and the crimson woods. Uh, we're gonna turn that off now so it doesn't blow itself up. Uh, but this farm is absolutely insane. It gathers tons and tons of wood on both sides. Uh, this side even gives us out shroom lights and uh, we got it completely inside a building and it somehow doesn't explode itself too often. <laughs> The last build that is technically attached to the black biome here is my mob zoo. So let's head in and check it out. Entrance goes underground. And then underwater while well, you got this beautiful view up above. And we head in and go up. This building has a total of three floors in it and houses every mob in the game. Uh, if you want to see a full video about everything we have, you can check out the video I've already made on my YouTube channel. 
Uh, we even got the warden trapped in here. Uh, but we've had some new additions like the bogs from 1.21 and the breeze is hiding in there somewhere. On the peaceful floor here, we've even got um, the new variant of dogs and armadillos. So right here, we got one of every wild wolf wandering around. In here, we've got one of every tamed dog, including one of them wearing some armor. And then over around here... Right here by the sniffer from the previous mob vote, we have the armadillos. Oh, they hide even when there's glass in between us. <laughs> I didn't know that. And as you just saw, yes, we have an elder guardian. The elder guardian is up on the aquatic floor where we have all the aquatic mobs, both good and bad. And then there's one special bonus room up high. And this is where we keep our endermen can't teleport anywhere the next biome to check out here is the white biome this one has a mountain that goes up to y level 200 ish and this was first thought of and started back in 1.16 or 17 uh, before the introduction of a new world height was ever thought of um it wasn't finished until recently uh with decorations and stuff but the the tower the towering mountain is very much decided by the old build limit. Uh, but this biome has some really cool features in it, like the stray farm and bee farms and Christmas village. Um, so let's head down in here. Um, and you can see this has some uh, ice spikes around here. Um, and it even has the subway a thon, which is a small monument uh, to last year's stream a thon from 2022's stream a thon, I mean. And it's got everybody's armor stand packed in here tight. Then over here, we have a monument pixel art of a giant stray. Once you enter in through the stray's rib cage, you can head down here. So this farm has been overhauled to it used to be an old skeleton spawner, but now the skeletons spawn and they go down into the bottom here where we have glow lichen to stop glow squids from spawning and they actually go through powdered snow to turn into strays uh then they come up over here to be killed by the player with looting three uh their items then go down here into various places where we have shulkers for bones and there's even now auto crafters to auto craft that into white dye and bone meal and then once all of these are full the bones will even go into a shulker loader for bone blocks uh and we have normal things like arrows uh slowness arrows and stray heads getting their own shulker loader storage over here in the back is where we added all of this we literally just finished up this stuff today with all the auto crafters but it is a hot mess to get stuff from these filters through to several layers of auto crafters that need different timing um and it turned out amazing actually um i wish we used it enough to show off how it works while it's uh full but right now it is very very empty Previous to adding auto crafters to the stray farm, we added auto crafters over at the bee farm. Um, first, I'll show you guys the cute little bee who's up flying in the air. Inside of here is actually our bee breeder. No auto crafters here, but it's the same design we've had uh, from Exumavoid for ages. Uh, and I'm sure it works just fine, but we haven't needed to use it in a long time because we have this dual beehive and bee nest farm here. So inside of each of these, we have two rows of bee farms and inside the yellow shulker boxes is honey bottles and the other two thirds of the farm is honey blocks. We recently added auto crafters in here, which was previous to the strays and then a little tiny bit of storage for sugar at the end, which has not, nothing in it yet. Uh, but back here is an insanely complicated addition uh, to the storage room uh, to auto craft honey into blocks while it comes in right here though the main mechanics of the farm stays the same 
This was designed by Ilmango slash Gecko, uh, followed both of their videos for this. And then this is the same exact farm design, but with honeycomb, which you guessed it is being crafted into honeycomb blocks. Next up on top of the mountain is our Christmas village. Uh, so every year, if I do a stream on Christmas or Christmas Eve sometimes, uh, we'll come on here and add to our Christmas village. We've got this gingerbread house. We've got a Christmas tree with presents underneath. We've even got Santa's sleigh, I think is the new addition, um, pulled by Rudolph. And in the house, it's fully decorated with, uh, you know, a warm, cozy fireplace and lots of Christmas cheer. Though it's the wrong time of year to be here. Let's get out. Up next is our purple biome. Uh, so this one is a very uh, curious, foreign, uh, like alien kind of world with these mushroomy uh, purple trees and uh, circuit boards into the ground or crop circles, whatever you want to think about it. Um, and lots of amethyst in and around this place. The first attraction in the purple biome is the diamond yeeting shrine. Once we head up in here, you can see we got a lava pool in the shape of a diamond made out of diamonds. Uh, this is where uh, we grab diamonds and throw them into lava when we hit certain follow milestones. Right now, it's for every uh, increment of 100 followers on TikTok uh, that causes us to burn a diamond in here. But just above there is our two squids. Um, we can go up into these guys to AFK. Uh, our squid farm, which is down below, uh, that is this right here. This is a nether portal design of squid farm uh, where they immediately uh, get teleported to the nether and die and the collection is there. So we'll see that when we're going through in that side. It was designed by Logical Geek Boy and it's even got a kill chamber for the pigmen that spawn from the portals. The newest addition to the purple biome is this giant pitcher plant. Uh, it is very bright, very vibrant, and it is the home of our sniffer farm. Uh, so once you go inside, you're greeted by this very sniffery interior uh, where we have storage for pitcher pods. Holy crap, there's a lot. And pitcher seeds and sniffer eggs, even if we do some breeding. Uh, if we head up top, you can see that we've got a whole family or army of them up here moseying around, digging up seeds constantly. <laughs> then if we grab some seeds and make our way to the bottom, there is even a dual growth chamber here. So uh, if you turn this on and start planting some pitcher pods, you get pitcher plants. And then if you'd like to extend that down and turn it back on, you can start growing some torch flowers. This is a cool little contraption that I haven't seen anyone do before and I'm planning to make a video on it. It's in my list. Then in the purple biome technically is our king slime. Uh, inside of him is a giant mob grinder. So you head in through this underwater path. Then up top is where you're first greeted by the storage. Um, this is designed by Death Ridge, but I don't believe his video is live anymore. Um, and the mobs just come down here and you slaughter them manually using looting three. Very early game farm that I don't quite use anymore, but it is good for general loot and it looks pretty cool too. And the last biome to show off today is the green biome. Uh, this has Taipei 101 in it, the massive tower I've been standing on to point at the other biomes from. Um, it has some massive giant palm trees that are super cool looking. Uh, the, and it has all of my plant-based farms. I have a video on Taipei 101. Inside of that is my 500 club, which is a way for you guys to get a spot in my world. You can have a room inside the tower of your own, decorated how you like. You can send me schematics and I'll rebuild it in here once you have over 500 watch hours on Twitch. The video on this will be linked below as well. But let's head inside and I can show off some of this to you. 
uh we have a nice little lobby here um with a uh, charged creeper manning the bar and then if we head upstairs on floor 18 here this is where we actually have access to our drowned farm um so what you do is you stand here and it actually turns off that fire and lets the uh drowns fall down to be killed with looting or if you step back off it they'll just die to fire with no looting death um but up above us i'll show you guys the drown farm uh this is an old school il mango design uh based off of a river biome that actually just intersects all of the rooms that we've added in here for uh viewers and they fall down and they get attracted to the turtle egg and they come down here to be slaughtered but some of the rooms we have here we got mace's room who's inside a giant safe with all of his gold and money and or, and expensive paintings or we have rooms like Gia's over here which are more open and just become a lobby for the floor giving up some walls to have more space and more openness here then back down here in the lobby is where you actually get access to the drown farm loot where we have everything that comes through saved uh, right here for us in these beautiful cyan shulker boxes Next up in the green biome that we'll stop over here is our vine farm. Uh, so once you head in here, you look up, the ceiling actually has a vine shaped uh, skylight. Um, and inside we have farms for all the various vines. So these are some of the nether vines uh, and they farm up and fill these shulker boxes. We have the other ones right here uh, and they disable themselves when they're full. Uh, then on this side, we have Glow Lichen, which is a manual farm that you need to run up and over here. Uh, and then lastly is the slowest vine farm, and that is our uh, Glowberry farm, uh, where it, we don't even really have any. This thing really needs added to my list of things to rebuild. But down in the bottom is the OG vines. This is also very manual. You got to grab yourselves some shears and run around and cutting them down. Uh, and then the water will pick them up and send them into here. And then I think this has about the coolest exit of any farm in my base. Boom! <laughs> my only uh, slime block elevator. <laughs> Um, just across the hall here is our sugarcane farm, uh, where we have some giant pixel art sugarcane. And if you hop down here, this is the first thing and the only other one in my base that we have added auto crafters to. So the farm is actually running because it needs to refill its entire inventory. Uh, we have on the first side here is actually auto crafting into sugar. Um, and then on this side here, it auto crafts into paper. Uh, and then this last side here will fill up with just normal sugar cane once it's full. If we head into the redstone out back, uh, this side is unchanged. It's just generic storage. But then here we have a custom design for an auto crafter for paper. Um, this also has detectors to make sure that it doesn't overflow and overfill the crafter in any way. Um, and it also has a way to detect if it's full and send a signal to turn off the farm once it's all full. Uh, then we have another one for sugar here. Had to use a different design because of different crafting recipe. Um, and it is uh, chugging its way along. You can see these redstone torches are turning off when the farm is full or when each column is full. And um, this has been recently rebuilt and I am extremely happy uh, that it is fully functional. Another farm nearby just across the corner is the giant cactus farm. Uh, this has got some cool art on top and if you head inside we have a really large uh, down to the old build limit cactus farm uh, that has a really efficient design by Il Mango. Uh, what this does is it fills up all these barrels full of cactus here for us to have in the future uh, and then it sends the rest once it's full out and over. Those items are then sent out through this pipe and we can drop down into here 
to see our cactus smelter. So the items go into furnaces, and if we need to repair a tool, we can just grab out some green dye, and boom, got XP. The light turns off, the items are being entered out, and new cactus are starting to smelt. The last thing on the green biome itself is a little tiny pickle farm this guy got kind of ignored by the rest of the biome being updated but i have it on my list to one day come back uh and get myself you know a uh, nice little building around here uh the plan is in the future to turn this entire cove here into a shanty town kind of a pirate cove kind of deal um, and add in a whole bunch of small buildings each of them having small little micro farms for each of the two tall flowers and other like plant life kind of farms and the shantytown pirate cove is a great transition over to the pirate ship sheep the pirate sheep ship i mean uh in here we have our sheep farm uh so we get wool of all colors down in here um, and we have just, you know, basic shearers for every color sheep trapped in the hull of a ship. This build was actually designed um, in part with the community and it was the first streamathon build that was added to my world. There's a couple more things in the oceans around my room. Um, namely, uh, some more streamathon stuff goes out here. So off to this side of the black biome is the SUSS Streamboat. This was last year's build for the Streamathon in 2023, uh, where we built a steamboat called the SUSS Streamboat, the SUS Streamboat. Um, and it is jam packed full of armor stands with everybody just vibing out in here um, but it is also a functional build in the form that it is my only actual brewing stand place uh like this is where i come to brew potions and i have all of the other ingredients and stuff stored haphazardly down here in barrels for me to access as i need so as I mentioned earlier, this is being recorded actively in the middle of a streamathon, and I am currently building an Imperial Star Destroyer uh, in the sky over here for the streamathon build. Um, it is not finished, um, not close. We still, we still have to do the whole exterior decorations, and we only have uh, the hull in place. Uh, though from the outside we do have like the boosters in and from the back it looks pretty sweet um, It is got a cool entrance. We'll enter the same way Leia did in episode 4 of Star Wars up through the hangar um, And in here it is barren uh, But you know, we, we've got some um, barracks for the stormtroopers to sleep in so far uh, That's about it. Um, I hope you guys will get to see this uh, finished in the next streamathon, or uh, ow, or tune in uh, to one of the lives. But because you'll get to see this thing menacingly just chilling in the air. Then right next door is our massive monument. Uh, this is a monument that goes from bedrock all the way to build limit. We put a block on it at the end of every stream, though the methods to decide how have changed. It used to be we played marbles on stream uh, and at the end of every stream and the winner would get on here. But upon starting the third tower, we uh, changed the rules to where it's now a more of a raffle uh, to get on there. And we only play marbles occasionally so that I can spend more time playing Minecraft. Uh, but this does go all the way down to bedrock, um, so negative 64, and we've gotten quite a few blocks up here on the third tower, um, which is just barely up to here. Negative 44, give or take. There is one more farm off in the distance, uh, off by the side of the white biome, and this is our guardian farm. We got an ocean monument here, uh with a very simple guardian farm this is not a permanent installation uh but it will it does work nicely and gets us mobs fairly quickly uh so you just head up here and the guardians will spawn just in this corner and come up here and go to the nether where we'll collect the loot 
I believe this was designed by ENXO4. One more thing uh, near the base island is the dig site for a future creeper farm. This has been on hold for a long time. I'm sure one day I'll finish digging it. But this is a full size perimeter that might one day go down to bedrock. Who knows? So that's it for here at the base island. Uh, we're about to go through the nether portal and let's check out everything else in the world. Right when we get through to here is our nether tunnel entrance. This is our main portal back to our base. Uh, we even have a large opening to get to the nether roof. Um, at each nether portal, I have a little bit of a uh, refill station um, and I have boats to get around. We just captured this guy earlier this stream. Uh, he's going to go into the mob zoo at some point. But our main form of travel is by boat on blue ice. Uh, this here is our main entrance to the opening of the hardcore nether world. This here is our entrance to just fly out into the nether and start exploring. Um, good point to show you the exterior of the blaze farm. You guys will get to see that here shortly. Back in the boat to the next intersection. And this here, if you want to take a guess, is the squid farm portal. Uh, so that's where these items uh, and ink sacks come through and uh, fill up shulker boxes and head on to here. <laughs> yeah, this is full. This is broken. <laughs> Uh-oh. Down this tunnel here is our barter farm. Uh, this is our second version of our barter farm where we have lots of inputs. All right, so when you head in here, you can hop on down, and this is where you can trade with, trade with the piglins. But they're mad at me because I opened my, my shulker box. So let's get up out of here. This is where you can spread the gold evenly to all 150 of those piglins. And this is the redstone for collecting all of their items because they drop items so fast. Uh, because they drop like a dozen items and they drop them in very, very large quantities. So we have uh, lots of storage for everything they drop. I am not looking forward to adding auto crafters to this because there's going to be so many things you can craft out of everything they drop. Continuing down this way through the nether portal, uh, this place is just a pretty little room that lets you through. I am going to take a sleep so we come back through here. Uh, our end is very, very dull. Um, I'm not really one for doing end builds and end city stuff um, or end island builds and projects like that. Uh, I like having the ability to respawn the dragon and not have it destroy my uh, stuff here. So I don't really have a lot to show you here. Um, this is just redstone left over from moving... Um, from moving shulkers through and a thing we don't even use anymore to kill the withers underneath but what i can show you a little bit of is through this portal right here there is two farms that i have in the end right here next to each other this one is a wither rose farm and when we head in over there uh it's going to be pretty loud um and but i'll give you a show a tour of that first wings are good so wither bar popped up and we are heading in to the underside right here where this is the where the output of the roses go it does not appear that we have any at the moment i'm always just terrified of being in here because of how underbuilt this is but to actually use this farm what you're supposed to do is stand up here on this pink platform and i'll go down in free cam to show you what was that? The skulls are permanently getting their directions changed? That's not good. Is, is that gonna lag? Is this gonna cause lag, chat? Like, this is a revelation I'm having right now. Like, actually, this is like a, a 1.21 change or something. 
Um, I'll have to research that. Okay, but they spawn up here on this platform and are attracted down into this hole where the Wither is trying to shoot at those Endermen, but his projectile gets launched into space, apparently, um, and the explosions of that kills the Wither. The Endermen. Next up, over on this part of the end, we have a little tiny... Uh, spawn platform again for Enderman out here. Uh, same exact design as the top of that, except lower down in the world, so it's much, much faster. And this is actually a skulk farm. Uh, so what you can do is hop in the minecart, go inside to side, harvesting the skulk sensors, or even punching out the skulk blocks there, and they will be replaced with stone generators. And that's it we have for the end. So we're hopping back through this portal and we can continue where we left off in the nether tunnels. Next stop is a two part farm uh, here at the very south side of my tunnel system. This here is the raid farm that I have designed by Chapman. So if you come here with bad omen, uh, the uh, pillagers will fall down here um, and they will die of fall damage and their items uh, will end up over here. It's where I get my totem supply from. I do use totems in this hardcore world and I have a playlist of all nine totems I believe I've popped in my hardcore world. Uh, but for three and a half years, I don't think uh, nine totems is, is too bad of a record. If you head up this little water path, this is where you can actually uh, stop them from dying of fall damage to kill one and get uh, Hero of the Village. But to get a raid to spawn, you actually need to have Bad Omen, which has been changed recently in 1.21, uh, and we rebuilt this farm, though we rebuilt it prior to 1.21, so there's no auto crafters. Uh, but this is a bad omen farm, again designed by Chapman, uh, where they spawn down at the bottom and they will be attracted to the golems and fall into a hole where they will then come up the water and let me murder them here with looting and we can get pillager heads, ominous banners, and the various bad omen bottles that they drop now. You can also see out the window, this is where the raid farm platform is. So this is where all the mobs fall and come down that chute and they drop down and that's where I kill them and get my totems from. So zooming back on past our main nether portal. And if we make the first left afterwards, uh, this is going to take us to our blaze farm, which you saw the exterior of earlier. Uh, you just got to fall down here. And my most recent video at the time of recording on YouTube is a video going over how I came up with this and how you can also make uh, a dual blaze spawner farm. So we have one spawner up there another spawner here some beautiful pixel art in the middle uh they will fall down into lava get pushed to the middle and you can kill them for drops that'll end up in this chest the next stop is actually not really a farm uh, of any kind uh this is our map ocean so if I get up high enough, you can see here are the places that we built the Minecraft maps. Uh, if you saw the three maps we had in the trophy room before, uh, these are where they have been built. And then we also have the 500 Club map, which is a 3D map, which is a much more difficult thing to build. Um, all built here in hardcore Minecraft. Can I get them in view? Here they are, way up in the sky. This tunnel leads us here to the spawn chunks. Where we have several farms that are running constantly in my hardcore world. 
the very first farm I built and what I recommend people build uh, very first in any world they start is an iron farm. Uh, this one is by Logical Geek Boy. It's farming up lots of iron ingots for us. Um, it actually fills up from both sides, so there's double as much as there appears to be. Um, and it is very, very fast and efficient. Then over here, we have our moss farm. This moss farm is uh, got four moss modules designed by Raiseworks, uh, which is combined together to fill up all of these boxes of moss, which then also fills up all this bone meal underneath once the chests are full. Um, and even in the back, it has a bamboo farm, which is being bone mealed. Um, and all this bamboo gets crafted up into here. Had to get up in the sky after uh, sleeping to despawn all the mobs. And I can show you a good view of our shulker farm. Uh, this was designed by Ray's Works. And it has a shulker in the middle getting attacked by a snowman. Uh, and he's supposed to have a whole bunch of other shulkers around him. But it appears that they all died out and the farm is no longer running. Uh, but that's okay because this is a single player world and I have plenty. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is more shulker shells than I will use like ever. Um, though I probably will turn the farm back on soon. Because I know now that it's broken. Now, next up is a series of farms that are actually in the nether. Like this one here, my Wither Skelly farm. Uh, this is a full perimeter dig in the nether. I think it's actually 280 block perimeter. Um, and in the middle is a Wither Skelly farm that is in a dual intersection. Uh, so I have a video on this on my YouTube channel uh, already as well. So if you want to check that out for more detail. But this one is Star Wars themed, if you can tell by Vader fighting Luke and the lightsaber beacons that we have sunk into the bedrock. Uh, but down here in the middle of it is where we have all of our storage. This is where shulkers of uh, bones and coal come out as well as uh, where we would queue up our wither skelly skulls. All that's really needed to use this farm though is to head up here and to stand on this pressure plate and smack away uh, to activate the minecart collection and the piston pushers above. So if you continue down through the nether tunnels, you're actually going to find the second part of that wither skelly farm. And this is actually a wither farm. Uh, this place will kill withers using entity cramming um, at a rate of over 4,000 withers per hour. You stand here spamming uh, soul sand and you put the heads of the wither skulls into here uh, and it will automatically uh, place down the soul sand and dispensers will put the heads in place to make withers and they will suffocate here in the bedrock of the nether ceiling. Um, I have all sorts of protections with portals here. Uh, so hopefully if they ever escape, they go through the portals. Uh, but this is designed by Borkin on YouTube. Um, huge shout out because this farm has saved me a ton of time uh, killing wither skeletons uh, and getting beacons for everywhere in the base that you've seen them. Then comes the most full nether tunnel of the entire nether, because this is where we have almost all of our nether farms. Uh, the first on our journey is a frog light farm. Made it to the top where you stand right here and on this pressure plate, which activates some stuff down below uh, for magmas that are getting spawned in. Uh, the magmas are going to spawn in on this platform and be attracted to the iron golem. Uh, the, they're going to die in the powdered snow. And then once they're down to just the smallest of magmas, uh, the frogs are going to eat them up. And this hopper minecart is going to collect them all. The hopper minecart's going to then drop all the items down really fast and be sent down into the collection below. Uh, down here in the collection, we obviously have an item filter uh, for each of the types of, w of frog lights. And uh, they're shulker loaded, so there's nothing in the output here right now. Just down the hallways, a very short distance, 
is our old school barter farm. This was made very, very early game with just six piglins. We do not use it anymore, um, but we do have the full item filter uh, and all those shenanigans here uh, for using it still. And again, just down the hall is another farm that we go above the bedrock ceiling for. Uh, this is my gold farm. Uh, it's designed by Nembomb. And you stand here and you whack them all with looting three. But if we go up above, you can see this farm is extremely overbuilt. And uh, it gives us a constant flow of, of piglins to kill. Um, and if we head back down, we have midway here a, a storage system uh, that filters out the gold and all the piglin heads that drop. Uh, and the gold nuggets and we're going to be adding auto crafting into this soon 1.21 uh, is gonna make this so much easier to collect my items Continuing down again even further is actually a pair of tunnels. We're gonna head here first uh, We go up above the nether roof and We make our way to an afk spot for our ghast farm uh, so the ghast farm is designed by Nembom, and I got the original idea from it from Exuma, I believe. Uh, the ghasts spawn on these platforms and immediately teleport over to the overworld. They're the only mobs that can spawn here, um, as is, so it is very efficient. And if we head down, I will show you what's on the other side of this portal. This portal in the nether is very close, but when you get to it in the overworld, because of mechanics for nether, uh, we actually end up pretty far away from where the actual ghast farm itself is. So we fly in through the mouth of the ghast and we make our way inside to see the portals from the ghast farm. And this is a shulker loaded uh, gunpowder farm that we get from the ghasts and if you missed it the portal we came through is actually a ghast fireball being shot out by our homeboy over here and the last portal we'll be going through the piece to resistance except it's been broken for a hot minute is my slime farm uh so this is an eight chunk slime farm uh where there is eight chunks all side by side by side by side making this rectangle um that are all slime chunks uh the slimes spawn on the platforms and get attracted to the iron golems and then die on the soul campfires their items are then flushed through the water you can see flowing right there um, and over to the chests in the back to fill up you can see them coming in through right there. I say it's broken because while it does technically work, I say it's broken because 1.18 added a whole bunch of extra chunks below the farm. So now the mob cap is getting uh, filled up by random mobs spawning below and we only get occasional drops just like the one you saw die over there. Um, we don't get them at a rate that we were used to previously. Uh, though there is still one cool trick this farm has if you sit down and get up on the throne You can just watch the slime rain down my dudes But it's time to take a look at some stats uh, First thing I want to point off is the world has passed three and a half years old um, earlier this year um, It is insane to think how old this world is and if we uh, go take a look at um, first my advancements, um, the Kernel Mod Pack, I want to give that a shout out. Everything you've seen that doesn't look quite vanilla is from the Kernel Mod Pack. Um, all gameplay mechanics are vanilla, uh, but we have vanilla tweaks, data packs here, and we have some quality of life stuff because I play in this world so much. I need stuff to be quick, um, but it doesn't change any of the vanilla gameplay mechanics. Uh, but what I wanted to show off here with this advancement mod is that I have all the advancements. Um, you can quickly go through. We've gotten them even for 1.21. We've completed them all. Um, and then if we go back to the um, stats, 
I will scroll through all these and point out any of them that I think are relevant or really large. We have 3.2 million damage dealt. That's insane. 1.8 million damage taken. No, 187,000 damage taken. Okay. Um, I'll scroll through. Mm. Distance by Elytra is 21,000 kilometers. Insane. I'd love to know in the comments if you have a personal world that has any of these stats that are longer than mine. And then when we get to the item statistics, let's sort by each of these. So you can see my top uh, 10 or so blocks mined is netherrack, then stone, sand, sandstone, dirt, soul sand, soul soil, grass, deep slate, gravel, and packed ice. Uh, if we go by times broken, shears diamond pickaxes iron pickaxes diamond shovels iron shovels netherite picks 12 that really pains to see dude um oh man times crafted uh iron ingots um that's probably out of iron blocks is the majority of this um but you can see these are my top items crafted Times used, it's only going to make sense that netherite pixes and netherite shovels are up here. Uh, though I am a bit surprised to see diamond pickaxes up here too. Uh, with some blocks making the top five is crazy. I've done a lot of building with moss. It's my go-to. Oh, you guys can't even see. These are netherite axes and diamond shovels and stuff. Um, times picked up. 2.6 million iron ingots. That's because I break the chests at the iron golem farm. And uh, then I use that to auto craft into blocks. But soon we're going to have auto crafters handling that for us. Gold nuggets is the same reason. And then the rest of these is from mining. Yo, honeycomb actually made it in here from the recent uh, uh, debacle of breaking all the honeycomb barrels to add the auto crafters and shulker boxes. <laughs> And times dropped. Netherrack at the top. Sugarcane from the recent sugarcane farm. Uh, redo. Gold nuggets. Yeah, this stuff is great. Um, let me actually just go by times mind again. And I will scroll down through the whole list. Oh boy, this is really, really uh, finicky. Um, can I like arrow down? Oh, I can not I can arrow down. Okay, uh, here we go. So I'll go through the whole list so you guys can take a look at any block you'd like. Uh, freeze frame during the, during the VOD. Oh man, I can't just, whoo. If you, uh, I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you going. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just spam myself. Uh, I'm going to go through everything so you guys can see it. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome, chat. I want you guys to be able to see everything here. Jeez. So many of these items. I've only broken like 300 times. Can I? I guess I could just like actually scroll. I don't know though. Uh, um. Oof. I don't know what to do. Eh, we'll just go through like this. It's going to take ages otherwise. It's 60 FPS. I'm sure you'll be able to pause and see it all. <laughs> it's mostly zeros at this point anyway. Um, oh, I just saw like all the pottery shirts fly by uh, and stuff like that. So. All right, that's all of our items. Oh, these ones that you can't see. This is minecart with chest, minecart and saddle. Now on to mobs. Um, I'll just quickly scroll through these for you guys to see all the mobs we've killed in this world. Um, any absurdly large numbers I will love to point out. Um, everything here seems pretty tame so far. Um, there's going to be some big numbers. 10,000 skeletons, you know, that's all right. That's all right. Um, 
I've killed two wardens. Oh, nice. 62,000 wither skellies. All right. Um, and is that 1.5 million piglin? <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. All right, but that is it for this world tour. Uh, tune in at 25,000 days, I guess, and we will uh, see you then, and maybe we'll see what's changed. If you like what you saw in this world tour and you want to see what the world used to look like, go back and watch the 11,000, 10,000, 9,000, 8,000, 7,000, 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, or even 3,000 day world tours. There's a really, really been a lot of progress, especially if you go back to one of the really old ones. Um, there'll be all linked in the description below, along with any videos relevant to any farm that you've seen in my world if it's a farm that i've made a video about it the link will be there if it's a farm that i was inspired by or used another video from another creator its video will be there uh for you and if there's no video there and you want me to make a video about the one that i have in my world make sure you leave a comment um tell me in the comments any of your favorite builds you saw along the way um or anything you think i might be missing um thank you so much everybody uh for watching it's been absolutely fun. And now I've got a streamathon to get back to. Peace out. <laughs>